click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will discuss about two topics. One is index nested loop join and how from index nested loop join the cost effectiveness on the disk access time and the seek time will improve and introduce another join that is known as merge join. We will perform the merge join and then compare each of these cases like the sorted one or the unsorted one, the cost analysis for merge join which is based on this indexed nested loop join. If we take all the structures of this nested loop join and then create an index on the outer relation, then it will help not only for accessing a reduced disk time, also it will happen faster access on the data. Now that we are talking about an index nested loop join, so the nesting of the loop join is there, we are not discussing that structure anymore. Now if there is student and text relationship and on that nested loop join or theta join happens but on an indexed basis that means say for an instance the student relation index is available to us and say the student text relationship with the student ID equals to 45023. So if we can refer to the ID as the index to the student and then we can find a particular ID 45023 using the index then we will move to the, our next part text relationship then other than scanning all the files it will look for the indexes if the value matches with this previous value on the index ID then it will create the resultant set only of the indexes. So it actually reduces the disk access time. Now say we will need BR number of IO operations that is involved with this index nested loop join. As BR is the outer number or the block on this outer relation, then we can have at most BR number of R operation because the index can have at most BR IO operations or BR number of blocks associated to it. Now when we are talking about BR, then we will know that the cost will be reduced to Now here NS is the number of attributes or the queries in this inner relation S and C is the individual cost of accessing them. But for this outer loop we will have only the tuples on the inner and outer loop based on an index that is the block on that outer loop. So now let us calculate the same relation with the student index that we have used for nested loop join. So our student relation has 5000 entries in it and our text relationship has 10,000 entries in it and now on joining them on an index ID that means the students ID we have taken as the index so on average 20 entries are there per index that we are taking as the reference so now how this computation will change First, we will calculate the disk access time. So if the height of the tree is 4 and 1 for the root node, then there are 5 at total. Now we have the 5000 as the student one. So the disk access time will be Now if we compare it with the disk access time on a nested loop join which was much 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 higher that was around 2 lakh of entries. Now we will have only 25,100 disk access. Now it had reduced the disk access time but the problem is with the seek time because in each of the disk access or the block on the indexes it has to point to each of the value on the index so we need to create an index while cost and also the record while cost so it will actually increase the six on that data now let us calculate the six on that data now 
40,106 are previously having that we have on the nested loop join. First, we need to have the 100 plus 100. That means 200 more 6 to perform the entire operation because we need the index for the second relation and also the values blocks for the second relation. So this 206 is an extra overhead for having an index nested loop join. However, if we have natural join this two, then we can have the selection operation much faster than this index nested loop join on student and text relationship. So that will emerge on our next idea that is smart join. So in March join between two relations, we can perform either this natural join or equijoin or both. So natural join or equijoin based on the situation that some of the attributes belonging to the relations are common in one nature. So if we have R and S are our relation and there is something that means this is not equals to null. So there are some common attributes belong to the R and S, then we can perform both natural join and equijoin to it. So that is considered to be the mart join. So in mart join, we can have from TR and TS and merged it with the natural join or equijoin. Now the TR and TS on the joining on TR and TS will have the same attribute that belongs to R intersection S. Now we will see how to perform this smart join. Now we have the PR and PS at the address of first tier of R and the second TS of S. That is the first tuple of R and the second tuple of S. That is actually the first tuple of R belonging to each other. So we are calculating and store their address in PR and PS so that we can perform this theta join or the natural join to it. Now, PS not equals to null and PR not equals to null. If this two happens, that means both has to be not equals to null. Otherwise, if one of them is null, that means there are some not missing attributes in the TR that is present in TS or vice versa. So now we will perform our loop. Now first we are storing TS as the tuple to which TS points. That means the tuple to which the tuples are actually pointing. So the first relation tuple to which the second relation tuple pointing, we are first taking this one. Now we know there are more number of tiers, then we can have that TSS as a set of SS. That means a set of relation S that considered to be all the tuples that it pointed by PS to the TR. Now the PS that we have added that pointing to the TSS or the tuples on this address that we have from the relation. So now we can have the set of all those tuples as the SS. Now that we have added TS into the set, so we will point the PS to the next TS that we will again check that it belongs to PS or not. So in this way, we will add every tuples on the set SS. Now that we have mentioned done equals to false, so we will stop the loop until and unless done equals to true. So now we have added all the tuples that present in the second relation or the inner relation into the set of S. Now until and unless dan becomes false again, that means dan is true and PS is not equals to null, we will perform the next inner loop. That means creating the set and now we will perform the next step.
Now again we are calculating the TS that is the tuples to which PS points to. That means again we are calculating the tuple that is being added to the TS and now if there is any left in this PS. So now if this joining attributes of TS on the PS test is equals then we can say that we have joined it properly. So now if my TS join entity areas is equals to the TS test join attributes, then we can say we will add up all the TS dash to our set of S that we have already pointed to. Now that after that we set every PS to the next TS dash, that means the pointer which is pointing to the next tuple. Now we are ending it and if there is no such matters on the joining attribute on TS that is not matched on the joining attribute on TS dash, that means we are already finished with this. That means there are no other tuples that is left with this tuple set SS or other than the set that was previously we have acclaimed. Now what happened with this outer relation? That is more like this inner relation. So now we do need to handle the outer relation. Now we are taking the tuple TR to which PR is pointing. Now until and unless PR is pointing to null, that means there are some tuples left in this relation R. So we can have if checking that the TR joining attributes, the number of joining attributes on present on the tuple TR that belongs to the outer relation R and it is less than the number of the joining attributes that belongs to the tuple TS which belongs to the relation S. So if this two conditions satisfy, then it will perform with the next. So now we will take PR to point next TR. That means we have finished with this TR. So we will move to the next tuple and move until and unless every tuple of the relation R has been checked. Again, we will check all the tuples to which PR is pointing. So first we are finding all the tuples that belonging to the tuple set. Now again, we are pointing the tuple to the TR and which PR is pointing. Now if it is equals to the tuple, so we are not adding up the tuple, we are just keeping which join attribute is less than the join attributes on TS. Because for natural join, we need only the common attributes. So only when it is equals to, so we will add up the TR into another set. Now if this happens then we will actually make the join. So now we will check for each TS in the set S. That means for each TR we are considering the TS in the set S to join them. Now we are adding this TR joining TS to our result set. So for each tier, we will find the TS that belongs to the SS, TR, TS, PR, we will add to the result. Now in the next way, we will move to the next tier to have all the tiers to generate in this way. So now we will move until every peer that belongs to the tier and next we will consider the next tier that is pointed by this peer. So now we will finish our outer loop and the function 2 of having the march join.
so it will actually merge two tables based on a join attribute now we will consider the cost evolution of the smart join that we can have the better one from this index nested loop join now let us create first two tables for our example to see the sorted one that we can merge it and then join it because the function that we have described requires that every set SS that fits in the memory or the main memory and the R can belong to the main memory or to the outer or the disk block. So now we will need a sorted one to have our merge block to function in a more accurate way. So let us look at these two relations on which we can perform the merge join on the sorted one. So these are two relations R and S, PR is pointing to the first data, PS is pointing to the first data of S and joined on the conditions A1. That means A1 in the join attributes and this must match on these two relations. Now this, the A belongs to 3, B with A2 attribute of value 1, D8, 13, F7 and M5. Now we can see that it is a sorted one because A, B, D, F and M goes in a chronological alphabetical ascending order. Now the same values from this A, B, D, F and M, we can have the values on the S relation. It can happen that some of the values will not appear, but if it is appearing, then it must match with this R value relation.